Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo Mortal class overview video. In this video, we'll talk about each class that will be available in Diablo Mortal upon release, since more will be added in the future. We'll talk about their strengths, their weaknesses, what class is better in what kind of situation to help you pick what class is best for you. Now, before we dive in, just a heads up that you can find guides to all these classes on maxroll.gg, as well as guides on pretty much all things Diablo Immortal. Now, first off, we should also specify that in Diablo Immortal, what you pick as your main class is important. Unlike other Diablo games in which you can easily have multiple characters and your progress and your farming on one character can transfer to and help your other characters, Immortal is a game in which you'll really have your one main character and making powerful alts or alternate characters will be very challenging. So I would encourage you to try out all the classes that you're interested in, get a feel for the gameplay, before committing to one class. Because you will eventually want to commit to one character, and that's where you're going to focus all your efforts into. That is, of course, if you want to play optimally. If you don't care about that and just want to have fun, do whatever you want. Play all the classes, play as many characters as you want. But this is the reason that Blizzard is actually implementing an ability to change your character class. More details will come about this feature, but it'll be something like once a month you can change your character class. So you're not permanently locked into your character class. It's a medium term decision. And when you change class, all your major progress will transfer over. This will be especially helpful as new patches come out, the meta changes. So for everyone who likes to chase the flavor of the month, you can change your class without having to grind up a new character for months to catch up to where you were. Now, as we talk about the classes, we'll note that every class has two basic attacks and you're gonna pick one or the other. And every basic attack has an ultimate associated with it. You charge up your ultimate by basic attacking, and then once that alt meter is full, whenever you want to, you can trigger your alt, and it'll last for 12 seconds and give you some kind of a boost. So every class has two ultimates, and we'll discuss these ultimates along with the classes. Once we've given an overview for every class, we'll then talk about tier lists for different activities, which class is the best at, say, PvP, at speed farming, all that kind of stuff. So let's get started with the Barbarian. This is an aggressive melee class with lots of crowd control options, and it deals great area of effect damage. It's also one of the fastest classes in the game. It's great at leveling, it's great at farming, it's one of the best classes for both PvE and PvP content. It's great while playing solo, and it has some really good group buffs as well for when you're playing in a party. Especially when equipped with the right legendary items. You can give your party a speed buff, you can give them a 25% damage buff. Now the Barbarian isn't great at single target damage, so versus bosses for instance. And it also tends to have some longer cooldowns on its skills. Also the fact that it's melee means you're going to be taking damage constantly. So you need to focus more on defense than other classes. And as you push into higher difficulty content, it becomes increasingly challenging to be melee. Now for the primary attacks, the Barbarian has two to choose from. First, we have Lacerate. This unleashes a series of attacks, and the third attack will also heal you for a percentage of the damage you have dealt. Then the ultimate for this skill turbo buffs it, you're going to heal a lot more, and every third hit will also knock back enemies. You also gain a brief absorb shield when you activate it. So overall, Lacerate is an amazing primary skill. It deals great damage while delivering consistent healing. And then when you pop the ultimate, if you have a lot of enemies around you to target, you can quickly heal back to full health. The other primary is Frenzy. With subsequent attacks with Frenzy, you increase the attack speed of Frenzy. So every hit increases your attack speed of Frenzy by 8% for 3 seconds, stacking up to 5 times for a total of 40% increased attack speed on Frenzy. The ultimate for Frenzy makes you be able to move while attacking. And you can also move unhindered through enemies, and you gain stun immunity, and you are constantly at max Frenzy stacks. Now, Frenzy is powerful, but the heals from Lacerate are just too good to give up. If you are able to survive just fine without Lacerate, then you can take Frenzy, but typically 
Lacerate gives you such a good amount of sustain. So that takes us to the Crusader class. This is our Holy Knight in Shining Armor. The Crusader is another melee class, but it has some good defensive skills to compensate for being in the thick of things. Skills that will improve your block chance, or even provide a short invulnerability to yourself and your party. The Crusader is the class with the fastest overall movement speed in the game. And this is thanks to Draw and Quarter, which is a skill that makes you saddle up and ride a horse for six seconds during which you have 65% increased move speed. And unlike in Diablo 3, you can continue to attack, swing your sword around while you are on horseback. You're also able to drag up to eight enemies along with you. The Crusader does high area of effect damage, it's got good party-wide buffs. It has good crowd control for PvP. However, it's also quite vulnerable to being crowd controlled in PvP. And this is because if you are on your horse, and you get crowd controlled, you're gonna get knocked off your horse, and then you got that 16 second cooldown before you can pony up again. And outside of Drawn Quarter, you have no other escape skills. The Crusader is a class with high cooldowns, and its single target damage is lacking. So again, can be tough to kill bosses by yourself. The Crusader's two primary skills include Punish, which when you hit an enemy with, you gain Hardened Senses, which is going to increase your block chance by 30% for 2 seconds. This gives you huge survivability, especially against bosses. And the ultimate for Punish makes you strike all enemies in front of you, and makes Punish deal increased damage and give increased block chance. And you also gain an Absorb Shield for 3 seconds. The other primary skill is Sacred Fire. This hits multiple enemies. It deals most of its damage to the first enemy, but then it'll also deal less damage to other enemies. The ultimate here makes this skill deal more damage, and during this 12 second window, every enemy you kill, stacking up to 10 times, will give you a 1% damage buff for 2 minutes. So this comes out to a 10% damage buff that'll last you 2 minutes. And you also gain an Absorb Shield. So for just regular farming, Sacred Fire, is the way to go, or just in general in scenarios where you don't need the extra survivability that you'd be getting from the block chance of punish. That takes us to the Demon Hunter. This is a ranged class, so you're able to keep a safe distance from enemies. This class can dish out a ton of damage, and it's the best single target damage dealer in the game, so it's great against bosses. It's also great at evading boss mechanics while still outputting damage. Boss is going to lay down some damage zone that you're going to have to move out of. Most classes, while they're evading, they're not dealing damage themselves, but the Demon Hunter it is able to be moving and shooting at the same time. So it is consistently pumping out damage, no matter whether it's dodging or not. The Demon Hunter is great for leveling, it's great for farming, it's great at endgame content. In PvP, you want to hang back behind the tanks, and you got to be careful and choose when to engage. This is a very squishy class, and you cannot easily engage and disengage. The Demon Hunter actually has the worst mobility in the game of any class with respect to skills that grant mobility. So for PvP, this is not at all a beginner-friendly class. You need to know how to position yourself. You gotta be able to make snap decisions on when to engage. The Demon Hunter also doesn't have a ton of build diversity, and this is because the best Demon Hunter skill is Multi-Shot, which you get at level 1, which is arguably the best area of effect skill in the whole game. The Demon Hunter's primary skills include Crossbow Shot, which lets you shoot an arrow while you're moving at reduced speed. This is the best primary for the Demon Hunter because it allows you to shoot while moving. And the ultimate here will make you deal increased damage per hit, you'll be able to move faster, and you're also going to be launching volleys of arrows. The other primary skill is Explosive Arrow, which makes you shoot an arrow that will strike a target and then explode dealing damage to nearby enemies as well. So this skill deals more area damage, but you're sacrificing that tremendous mobility. The ultimate here is Bola Shot, which replaces the arrow with exploding bolas that deal more damage and knock away enemies. Next up we have the Monk, which is a fast-paced melee class and just overall a well-rounded class. It does good area damage, it has high mobility, it's got lots of tools to engage and disengage. You're able to pull groups of enemies towards you with Cyclone Strike, then burst them down with Area of Effect. In PvP, you want to engage, 
stun your enemy, deal your damage, and then pop out. The monk can also shield and buff party members. It has more group buffs than any other class, but you're not forced into a dedicated support role. The monk does lack in the single target damage department. It also has limited build variety because Exploding Palm is just so good that you'll want to take it. And Mystic Strike grants you so much mobility that you also can't pass it up. The Monk is also a class where your skill rotation is important, which makes it a bit more difficult to play. If you mess up your skill rotation or if it gets interrupted, like being stunned in PvP, you're going to be vulnerable. Thankfully though, the Monk does have short cooldowns. Its two skills include Deadly Reach, you punch out lines of force that can strike multiple enemies. It'll hit a target and then anyone behind the target. When you pop the ultimate here, you're also knocking back enemies and you gain an Absorb Shield. The other primary skill is Fists of Thunder. This lets you teleport to a nearby enemy and then unleash a flurry of blows on it and then on every third hit, you can teleport again. If you're going for a single target damage build, then this is the skill of choice. If you're going for an area damage build instead, then Deadly Reach is your skill of choice. When you pop your ultimate on Fists of Thunder, you're gonna now teleport to an enemy on every hit, not on every third hit, and you'll also generate a thunderstorm when you defeat an enemy. This will deal damage and knock enemies away, and you also gain an absorb shield. Next we have the Necromancer, who's a versatile mid-range class. This class is great at almost everything. The Necro's got good area of effect skills, like Corpse Explosion, good single target via command skeletons. You will passively generate skeletons when you select that skill, but then you can actively command your skeletons to focus on one target, like a boss. Necro's got good crowd control thanks to Bone Wall, which is especially deadly in PvP. You can control the battlefield, you can lock down enemy players, massive tactical options there. I'd be tempted to go Necro just for that. Necro's also got some good stuns. This class has the most crowd control options of any in the game, and it also has some strong support skills for group content. The Necromancer also has good survivability thanks to its summons. They'll run interference, soak damage for you, plus it has bone armor which is going to absorb damage, plus it has command golem which will taunt enemies to focus their attention on the golem. Thanks to everything that your summons bring to the table, Necro is the best class for solo content. However, the Necromancer does have low mobility. It only has one mobility skill and most builds don't use it because it's not that great and the Necro has a lot of other better skills. The Necromancer also relies on one additional resource more than other characters in the form of corpses. Some skills require corpses to use and so you gotta be mindful of that if there's no corpses on the battlefield, you can't use those skills. For his primaries, he's got Soul Fire. You throw a ball of Soul Fire, it explodes when it strikes an enemy, and it'll deal a lesser amount of damage to other enemies nearby. This is good splash damage, good area of effect. The ultimate is Hungering Soul Fire. Throughout the duration, you're instead launching multiple Greater Bone Spirits that will seek out enemies. You're shooting heat-seeking missiles, and targets hit multiple times will take cumulatively less damage just so that it's not crazy overpowered against single targets given the number of projectiles you're launching here. Now this is the best ultimate in the game. It's amazing for both air of effect and single target. The other primary is Bone Spear. You shoot a Bone Spear, it could pierce up to two additional enemies past your first target, dealing reduced damage after enemy it pierces. And the ultimate here is Dread Skull Scythe, completely different. Instead of launching a Bone Spear, you have a massive scythe that you can swing around and it deals damage to all nearby enemies and it knocks them away. This technically is the better DPS option, but it does require you to get up close and personal. And Hungering Soul Fire is going to be just automatically launching out of you without you having to do anything. You could just be running around evading boss mechanics, evading harm, and you're still launching out those hungering soul fires. Lastly, we have the wizard, who can be either long ranged or close ranged. This is a class with a lot of area of effect skills, a lot of crowd control options with stuns, freezes, chills, knockbacks, 
Plus it has these long lasting area of effect skills that it can plop down onto the battlefield and basically just control a big area. In PvP you're going to force enemies to take damage or just avoid going into that zone. So between the crowd control and between the area control that the wizard can bring to a battlefield it's a really flexible PvP class. The wizard even has these cool skill synergies. For instance, you can cast Ice Crystal, which is a skill by itself. A crystal appears, it hangs around for 12 seconds. Any enemies that are nearby will get chilled and take damage. But then you can shoot that Ice Crystal with either a Ray of Frost or a Disintegrate Beam. And if you hit the Ice Crystal, the beam will split and hit all nearby enemies. The wizard does have a lot of skill shot skills, meaning skills that you actually have to aim and if your aim is not on point, you're gonna miss and do no damage. So this is a class with a high skill cap. The wizard skills also tend to have long cooldowns, so you gotta be strategic about when you choose to use what skill. It's also pretty squishy in PvP, so you gotta rely on hit and run tactics with teleport. For its primary skills, you got magic missile, launches a missile of magic energy. This is the wizard's best primary attack. Its ultimate is ice Ice Missile, which enhances Magic Missile with Frost. This makes it do more damage and it's going to slow enemies that are struck. The other primary skill is Electrocute. You shoot Force Lightning from your fingers. It hits one enemy and it bounces to three other nearby enemies for less damage. While it's really cool and fun, this skill is the area of effect option for the wizard, whereas Magic Missile is a single target option. But the wizard already has so many other area effect skills and you just lose too much single target damage by going with electrocute. The ultimate makes electrocute deal more damage and allows you to move while attacking and it increases the number of secondary targets. All right, so that's a class overview. Now we're gonna go on to the tier lists. Again, you can find these all on maxroll.gg. Before we start though, I'll emphasize that there's no bad classes in Immortal. Every class can do every activity. It's just that some might be better than others but none are actually bad. So first we'll talk about speed farming. Whether you're doing bounties, elder rifts, lairs, tasks, you basically have this daily routine of activities you want to be doing in Diablo Immortal. If your objective is to become as powerful as possible, as quickly as possible, you got a checklist of things to do every day. So we're talking about here which classes are going to be the fastest at getting through that list of activities. So the best speed farming classes are the Barbarian, the Crusader, and the Demon Hunter. The Wizard and the Necromancer can't quite keep up, and the Monk falls behind even further. Next we have Dungeons. You're gonna eventually want to run Dungeons because this is the only place where you can get set items. The best classes for running Dungeons are the Crusader and the Demon Hunter. The Barbarian, the Monk, and the Necro are the next best, and the Wizard's a bit weaker than the rest for Dungeons. Now, no matter what activity you're doing in the game, you'll often find yourself fighting bosses. And some classes are better than others at quickly taking down bosses. If you're playing solo, then being a good boss killer likely is not a priority for you. But if you're looking to coordinate a group, you definitely want to have at least one solid boss killer in your group. The best boss killer classes are the Demon Hunter and the Necromancer. The Crusader and the Wizard are good, and the Barbarian and Monk lag behind in this area. Next we have Challenge Rifts. This is an activity that is completely different from Diablo 3's Challenge Rifts. They're more similar to Diablo 3's Greater Rifts, but even that, not quite. With Challenge Rifts, you clear levels of increasing difficulty, there's 100 in total, and every time you complete a level for the first time, you get a reward. Challenge Rifts also have a competitive aspect to them. You have leaderboards that you can place on. If you make it into the top 1000, you'll get a reward. For solo, your rank resets weekly, so you can get the reward once per week, and for groups, it's monthly. Now, challenge rifts aren't gonna be something that you're gonna do as often as other activities, unless you're super competitive and really care about your rank, or you just really love challenge rifts. But outside of that, a class's placement on the challenge rift tier list it's not as important as the other tier lists. By that I mean, don't base your class decision on how good that class is at challenge rifts. However, if you're doing group challenge rifts and you want to know what's the best group I can put together, then it's worth knowing which classes are best at challenge rifts. A demon hunter, for instance, is essential to have in your party for challenge rifts to quickly kill the boss at the end of the challenge rift. Wizards are going to be the least desired classes in groups for challenge rifts because they lack in group buffs compared to other classes. And then lastly for PvP, I know not everyone cares about PvP, but I know some people will base their entire decision based on how well a class performs in PvP. 
To that end, the Crusader and the Barbarian. These are the top performers in PvP. The Monk, Necromancer, and Wizard are next best, and the Demon Hunter and the Wizard fall behind a bit. And that is going to wrap up this video. But do leave a comment down below with what class you're deciding to go with in Diablo Immortal. Personally, I'm 90% sure I'm going to go Crusader, with a 9% chance of Demon Hunter and a 1% chance I managed to get convinced into picking something else entirely at the last minute. Do stay tuned for more Diablo Immortal content. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.